and I'm the manager of emergency management for the city of Regina. And when did this uh, operation started? Uh, they started this uh, work here about nine o'clock this morning. The, the crew showed up. Uh, we've had the equipment in our sheds for a little while. Um, and uh, we had our roadway crews out. They cleared the snow off the edge there for us and uh, the, the crews have started putting out the HESCO barriers uh, this morning. So can you spell your name before you continue, sir? Sure, it's uh, J-A-Y O apostrophe, sorry, O apostrophe C-O-N-N-O-R. Cool. Okay. When, will, when will they be finished? Um, this stretch we anticipate being uh, finished probably sometime tomorrow. Now we can see what's going on, but can you just kind of explain the operation, how it works? Yeah, the, the HESCO barrier system that, that you can see behind us here is the, uh, it's a five meter section of wire baskets that co is collapsible. So uh, they pull it out, they, they set it up, it's uh, five meters, 15 feet long. Each, each basket is approximately four feet high, or is four feet high, and is uh, one meter by one meter square. And uh, we're putting in layers of sand, doing about a third at a time. They're topping the thing up, packing the sand down in between each layer. And what that gives us is a solid one, uh, one meter wide, four foot high, tall uh, uh, structure to hold back uh, uh, the runoff water. So how, how far is this, uh, how long is this that you're doing today? We're only utilizing this stuff in the deeper portion. So as you can see, it doesn't come all the way up to the end of the street here. Uh, we'll, we'll top that off with smaller bags and stuff like that to fill it in. But uh, as the deeper stretches anywhere, we're sort of over half a meter. We're going to utilize uh, these sorts of bags uh, or have a potential for water of up to half a meter. We'll use these bags. How many meters are like kilometers of rivers? side do you intend to uh, do in the city? Oh, I actually I don't, don't know the figure off the top of my head. I know that we have 550 meters of this uh, material. We'll use some of it here and some of it at Rotary Park. Um, we're going to be putting out, uh, we have about 3,000 feet of uh, bulk sandbags that we're going to be using and we have uh, 100,000 small sandbags that will be put out. I'm not sure what the total distance of that will be. Has the city used the HESCO barriers before? No, this is a new product for us this year. Um, the province uh, purchased some in 2011 and a lot of communities around the province used them with great success in 2011. And uh, we've just sort of added them to our, uh, our toolbox. We, uh, we try to keep more than, more than one tool in the toolbox. We have four different systems that we'll be utilizing this year. So. How well prepared is the city? I think we're, we're very well prepared. We've been working closely with the province. They're keeping us updated on the forecasts. Uh, we, we know what uh, we're expecting to come through the city. Uh, our engineering crews have done a great job on uh, uh, figuring out what the elevations that translates into the different locations. And uh, we're, uh, we're trying to stay sort of, uh, each crew is one step ahead of the next. So uh, engineers are, are working on the elevations. The next point, our survey crews go out, mark that in, and then they fo they're followed up with our uh, crews that are putting out the sandbags and the, the temporary diking structures. What was Speaking previously, like uh, two years ago when you had to do the same thing. Sorry. Like 2011, I don't know. Like what, what was previously used instead of these barriers? Okay, here, here we used uh, small sandbags. We, uh, we just built a very high sandbag wall, but it takes uh, quite a few sandbags to uh, to uh, replace one of these uh, one of these units. Is it so, better? Is this more effective? I, I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. Uh, this is less resource intensive and it goes out a little bit quicker so we can focus our uh, small sandbag efforts in the locations where we can't get bigger equipment in and in locations where we can use the larger equipment we can accommodate uh, uh, I guess a speedier uh, dual, dual approach using... Uh, How many sandbags goes to one cube there? Um, I can double check for you on that. I, I don't know the figure off the top of my head. It's a, I think it's about 1,200 sandbags to a five five foot high dike over a meter, something like that. Or maybe it's I don't know. I can check with the, the folks. They they've got those measurements. I'm not an engineer, so. And how many <laughs> how many meters? You said like it will. Uh... I think at, at this location we're doing about 300 meters okay. of the Hesco barriers, and then the ends where it's a little shallower, we'll go back to the small sandbags. And here also in front of. Yeah, on this side up to the intersection. Okay. Yeah. How how big of an operation is this? How big of a deal is this? To do? Um, well, um, any year that we anticipate high runoff levels, it, uh, it takes a fair amount of work uh, to, to make sure that we're prepared and it's pulling a lot of crews off uh, other, other tasks and making this a priority for, you know, anywhere from uh, two weeks to uh, about five weeks, uh, depending on the year. So um, it's, it's something that we expect, certainly. We know that it's going to happen every once in a while and we're prepared to deal with that, but uh, every year that it comes, it's just another... Um, I guess other programs get put on hold until this is accomplished. So. How much is 
Cost? How much does it cost? Yeah, same question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I don't have the, the figures. Uh, we're keeping a tally um, of all the equipment that we've purchased and the different things that we're, we're doing. We won't have a total figure, obviously, till the end of the operation. Um, but uh, our finance department is tracking that and our operational people are working with them to make sure all the, uh, all the money spent on flood response are being tracked so that we will have an accurate uh, figure to provide to the public at the end of this. You will just buy the ESCO bag, ESCO bag, ESCO cube. Do you know how much it costs just for the uh, I believe the HESCO barriers were uh, in the neighborhood of ninety thousand um, dollars. Okay. For the 550 meters that we purchased, okay. um, and the nice thing is they don't have a shelf life. They'll are, they're going to last a long time. Whereas sandbags, the bags eventually rot and they need to be replaced and constantly updated. Whereas these can be reused every year. So how much did it cost you? Sorry, missed that. I believe it's ninety thousand dollars. Ninety thousand. So. Yeah. Speaking of forecasts, how did Levy feel knowing that we might be seeing some more snow this week? <laughs> Well, at this point, uh, nothing would surprise me. Um, and again, we when we go into this, uh, we, we know what the forecast is. We also know that there's always a potential for the unexpected. More snow, we could get a rainstorm. And so we factor that in when we build our elevations to make sure that we have what we call freeboard is a, an extra foot to a foot and a half in certain areas to accommodate any of those unforeseen uh, acts of mother nature, shall we say. Again, speaking about the weather, it looks like uh, we could really be warming up here. Is it kind of just brace yourself and be ready for it? or? Uh, well, I, I think we're, we're prepared for it. We've uh, been anticipating it and, and the work that we're doing. Uh, I, don't, I don't think anybody's going to be shocked when it occurs. We're, the cooler weather that we're getting now is nice. It, it accommodates a little bit of melting and cooling at night, uh, but that often is followed by a larger spike in temperature. Um, and so we're anticipating that coming and we're, we're going to make sure we're ready for it. Did you see that you will put more uh, ESCO barriers somewhere in Regina? Uh, uh, Rotary Park. So just uh, north of Regina Avenue along the creek system to the west of Alabama. Albert Street is another location that we've identified using the HESCO barriers in. Uh, they probably won't be going out till sometime next week. Okay, and, and this so one, okay. The first thing you notice is it seems to be way faster. Like, just, just in the time that we've done this interview, yeah. if you were stacking sandbags, you wouldn't be anywhere near as far along in this. That, that was part of the, the decision to go with this, this Absolutely, and, and I mean a, a loader and a crew of five or six guys here with some heavy equipment can accomplish what uh, it might take 30 people sandbagging to do as well. And then we can keep those resources working elsewhere. So we essentially can run two sandbagging operations uh, at the same time. So you, you've identified obviously this is a particularly problematic area in the, in the floodplain? Yeah, this is one of the areas, uh, I wouldn't say potentially problematic, it's one of the areas we're expecting some deeper water and that's where these uh, HESCO barriers are nice, they're, they're strong, they go out quickly, um, and if we need to top them up, uh, we can we can build on top of them as required, so um, it's just basically water depth, di uh, sorry, water depth dictates where we put out the different types of resources. It'd be a little alarming if you're a homeowner to see all this uh, activity out here. They got lots of preparation, I'm sure, as far as advance yeah, yeah. notice for the homeowners. I believe uh, our communications people can maybe answer that, but I believe that we've uh, been talking to the homeowners. Uh, we talked to them in 2011, let them know what they're expecting. There's certain areas where we're going to be having pumping operations and stuff, and we do uh, letter drops to those people to let them know what's going on. And, and when are you expecting to put some bags here? I'm not sure when we'll top off this end. Uh, it's uh, a little farther down the priority list at this point. Okay. Um, again, because we're running about three different crews that are doing, um, going to be doing sandbagging at different times. Um, I would guess it'd be probably sometime later next week, but uh, without uh, uh, checking with our operational folks, I couldn't tell you for sure. Okay. It'll be down before the water comes. I hope so. <laughs>